this is Animat, and welcome back to the Muppet Vlog. Now this time we're going to be looking into the 17th episode of The Muppet Show, which includes Ben Vereen. Now if the name Ben Vereen sounds familiar to you, chances are you're probably a Broadway fan. Because Ben Vereen is considered a big star on stage and on Broadway, making his biggest splash when he appeared in Jesus Christ Superstar playing as Judas, getting a Tony nominee for it. But his biggest performance of them all is probably his leading role as Pippin, which he actually did win the Tony for. He has also appeared in other shows, including Chicago for the Canada and US tour. And at one point, he also played the Wizard of Oz in the Broadway show Wicked. So basically, he has also appeared on TV and on movies before, but it's mostly the stage where it's pretty much his forte. Now, going into the episode that he is in, I will definitely say that it is quite enjoyable. Although, I know that there are better, this one does have a few flaws, but I would say I did have a fun experience. And uh, what I did get the most fun is definitely the backstory where we get Fozzie Bear somehow getting trapped in this magician's box where it's supposed to be for next week's show, but Fozzie Bear decided, eh, you know what, I'm just gonna go in. And suddenly, he got trapped in there and doesn't really know what to do. Um, like, a lot of the results that happen in there, it's a lot of fun. Technically, there could be a bit of schadenfreude, since you're mostly ma laughing at Fozzie's misery throughout the whole situation when he's in the box, but it does lead to some great results, especially when Kermit actually did find a way to keep Fozzie's act in the show, but he's still trapped in the box. So, it, it's still a lot of fun, and, and it does lead to some great results, so... Um, again, this is definitely one of uh, Fozzie's more prominent moments in the first season of the show, so it's definitely enjoyable. Although, like, of course you can have a bit of sympathy for Fozzie for the situation he's in, but uh, overall, it's that, like, it led to a pretty good episode. And also, another great aspect I will say that really does make this episode pretty solid is actually the special guest, Ben Vereen. Considering that he does have a Broadway background, um, like, he's not just, like, a singer and an actor, he's also a massive performer, and you could definitely tell in many of the musical numbers here where, like, he would just go crazy. He would prominently show his dancing moves, uh, including in the first, uh, in the first part of, uh, Jump Shout and Knock Yourself Out, like, that's the opening act. And then we also see him just dancing around to Mr. Cellophane. And that that's where I find also, like, you get... This is another episode where it's very Broadway-heavy, where you feel like now you're seeing, like, this Broadway experience, considering that Mr. Cellophane is from Chicago. And I actually do find it kind of coincidental how Mr. Cellophane is from Chicago, and it wouldn't be until 1999 that... Ben Vereen would actually go and play uh, Billy Flynn in the tour, actually. So, um, it's kind of a really cool prophecy, but it de that number definitely was the one that stood out the most. It's where, like, he not only what, like he showed his singing chops, but also, like, you see him going around dancing like crazy. But again, it's all to prove how he is Mr. Cellophane, and nobody really cares, and, like, he's kind of uh, disappearing in the whole thing, but... Uh, one of the more interesting aspects about that number, though, is that this is definitely something that I can imagine they can actually perform live on stage. Not just with, well, what I, I know, like, this is from a Broadway musical, but what I mean, like, you could take everything that's in there, like the sets and also the Muppets that are in the background, and you can actually put that on stage, and it'll be, like, the exact same thing as you see on television. That's actually really cool. And, um... You know, I, I, I pretty much do admire, like, the entire setting of how they laid out everything. And it really does fit the tone for a bit of this melancholy mood that does associate with the song. So, definitely, I guess the whole thing I would say that, um, I, I do feel like Mr. Cellophane is the standout performance of the whole thing. But... Not only that, he also did sing at the end Pure Imagination, which honestly is such a beautiful song, I really do love it. 
And um, what I find interesting about that, this Pure Imagination in particular, considering that it was released in the mid-70s, it does have a bit of that um, 70s vibe into it. You can feel that there's a bit of a disco beat to it. That Not, not too hardcore, but like... Um, what I pretty much mean is that there is a bit of a beat. It's like... Something like that, you know? And yeah, apparently that's just a little bit of my beatboxing thing. I don't know. I kind of grew up with this. Uh, but anyways... Um, yeah, with Pure Imagination, I would say that... It is a pretty good number. It doesn't stand out as much as Mr. Cellophane, but also um, another interesting thing with the pure imagination bit is that it feels like it's a pretty tame version of that random bit that we got in Labyrinth. I forgot what the musical number is called, but there is that one part where it has nothing to do with the rest of the movie, but like you get all these random Muppets, like they would take off their heads and they would like keep throwing around and treat it like a beach ball. If you've seen the movie, you know which part that I mean. It's the one that's like completely random and the most out of place moment. Um, it's kind of like that and even the Muppet, uh, like the Muppet that they have dancing around during that, that scene, uh, he actually looks like that but it feels a bit more like a very tamed version of it but I don't know, like in, in terms of the musical number itself, I could definitely imagine that the Muppets can definitely do better than that. Of course, it's not the first time, like, of course, later on, it won't be the last time that the Muppets would sing Pure Imagination. There was also another one where um, they also included Lindsey Sterling and also, oh crap, what was, there was another singer, but I kind of forgot his name. I'll, I'll put his name over here. Um, like, they, they kind of had that whole bit, but it's just nothing but Muppet shenanigans, but... I, I don't know, like, if the Muppets would actually put in a lot more effort, I can imagine that they could do a solid, really good Muppet-like number with pure imagination. They just need, you know, like, j they just need to throw in a lot more creativity. Not necessarily just have the main Muppets sing it, but, uh, I, I know they could do better with pure imagination. I'm not saying that the one with Ben Vereen is not good, but, I don't know, I feel like they're pulling back a bit. But, uh, like I've previously stated before, this is not necessarily the strongest Muppets episode that I've seen. There are a few things that, uh, they're not all that great. I mean, sure, we do have a few of the usual sketches that feature nothing but corny and kind of unfunny jokes like at the dance or the house bid or veterinarian's hospital. Like, like that, that's kind of common, but there's also, the, like, there's this one running gag that they have with Crazy Harry, and honestly... Like, I feel like they kind of overdone it a bit. I mean, you might know a little bit about Crazy Harry's bit where, like, he would come in out of nowhere and, like, he would say, Did somebody say bang? <laughs> and stuff like that. But, you know, it's cute and it's kind of charming and funny, like, maybe the first two times. But afterwards, like, they kept on going and going and going and keep do like, keep adding into it and... Um, continuously make this running gag that it just feels a bit annoying like the joke is getting old quick so like I don't know whatever like they didn't really add anything new to it except they did do um, like they did take Ben Vereen and suddenly like he just jumped leaped up and like he grabbed uh, like he grabbed like the lightings uh, like the light settings like up on on the ceiling but that's the only thing new that they added to it but other than that, it just felt a, a bit annoying that they just continuously repeat the same joke without necessarily a adding anything new. So overall, I would say that this was a pretty good episode. Not the best, but it does have its pretty good moments. Uh, the special guest star was definitely enjoyable. The bit with Fozzie Bear is definitely great. But there are some parts that do need a bit of polishing and like they did kind of overdo a running gag. So, overall, it's good, and if you're a Broadway fan, this is definitely one of the episodes you gotta go and check out, mostly for Ben Vereen, but other than that, um, yeah, it's good. Not great, but good. But anyways, that is pretty much it for this Muppet Vlog, so I just wanna say thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see what crazy shenanigans they have in store, and hopefully they won't overrun another running gag. 
So until next time, see you later, dudes. Bye.